Thank you so much for that really sweet intro. And we decided we don't want to stand behind the podium. So we're going to get up here. So um, no matter what sector of the cannabis industry you are in, whether you're producer, processor, ancillary, lab, there's a bazillion, bazillion different subsectors of the cannabis industry. No matter what section you're in, from what I'm seeing right now, almost all of you are women in the cannabis space. And we have found over the years that um, collaboration strategies have really been a, a, an essential pillar and foundation for us to build massive growth over a short period of time. Women have an opportunity right now to hold leadership and you know, inspiration for the, the future of the cannabis industry more than any other industry. So this is just a really exciting time to be alive. We're so excited to be here with you today. And we're gonna share some of our tips and tricks that we've learned over the last five years together in the cannabis space. I'm Samantha Montanero, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tokativity, and this is my business partner. Hi. Hi. So good to see all your faces. I'm Lisa Snyder, co-founder and chief innovation officer of Tokativity. Um, we are so excited to meet every single one of you and learn about what you're doing and what you're passionate about, and we're really excited to share what we're passionate about as well and give you some strategies for um, for getting out there. It's hard out there, and but it doesn't have to be that hard. There are some, some tips and tricks that you can learn along the way. So um, do you want to share a little bit about what we do? Yes, absolutely. So we started Tokativity in 2016 as a cannabis event series for women. Really, as cannabis consumers, I don't know about you, but I was the only woman, and I was the only girl with a bunch of dudes smoking weed back in the day, okay? And, you know, we, we talked about, well, when we go to cannabis events, too, kind of what's going on, and it's like, well, we want to craft, and we want to collaborate, and we want to learn, and we want to create together, and we want to create something for women. And so we started Tokativity as a cannabis event series for women, and that became much more so quickly. We, um, in our first year, launched multiple chapters in other cities upon their request. Women were traveling from all over to come to Portland, Oregon, to come to our events, and they were like, we've got to do this in Eugene, and we've got to do this in Seattle, and we've got to do this in Denver, and we just said yes. So um, from, from the very beginning, collaboration was at our core. Um, since then, we have gone on to launch chapters all around the world, South Africa, Spain, we have connections in Canada, UK, Central America, South America, literally all over the world. There are people who have connected with the Tokativity community, and when they hear what we're doing and what our story is, they're like, yes, I feel this too. And that's, I get goosebumps every time I think about it, because when we were talking with women in South Africa, and we were having the same Canamom stories, and we were like all crying, you know, because it was just like, this is crazy. And the industry there is booming and talking about business. We, you know, we really realized that this is something really important right now. It's just for us to connect and tell each other stories. And there's a, there's a common thread amongst all of us. You know, us as women, we live our lives in the world being treated a certain way or think, having certain thoughts. And that doesn't change no matter what country you're in. Um, I mean, there's different legalities and there's different um, there's different movements that have happened along the way and we're so lucky to live here in the United States and have um, the work of the women behind us who have done a lot of work and there's also a lot of work to do. So if we want to see women be in the cannabis space and stay in the cannabis space, it's so important that we learn some new skills that are not, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We need to learn some and practice some new skills. Um, they're not so new, but we live in a patriarchal society, and we don't need to be thinking like that all the time if we want to actually live our lives the way that we want to, right? Yes. I guess. Yes. Um, really quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We're so excited to share more about yes. that. Yes. <laughs> um, but just a little bit more about Tokativity. So we've really evolved over the years. Um, what are we doing now? We are a collective of business owners, cannabis consumers, who believe in normalization, equity, equality, and empowerment of a modern consumption culture. 
I don't know about you, but I'm not a stoner bro dude. Um, you know, cannabis is a part of my lifestyle as a mother, business owner, nonprofit, volunteer, all of the things. So um, we connect through creative, social, and political, intersectional, feminist forward activities and creative campaigns that work to create radical change around the world. We still do some events. <laughs> we connect online digitally during all of this. So um, please make sure to follow Tokativity and sign up for our events. It's, it's, we have um, amazing ways on IG Live, on Clubhouse, and then in our digital platform, um, which is really a beautiful, robust place to actually network, meet other people, learn, and make those connections for your business to help you grow. And it's not Zoom. <laughs> not <laughs> Zoom. We're all of like Zoom fatigue, but like it's super fun, and if you just come, it's free, and it's super, yeah. super fun. All the things are free. So um, this is how it all started, really. This is right before women arrived for the very first Tokativity at Sam's house. Um, I actually met Samantha at a business networking event, and um, I have a feminist background and also a web design background, and I actually didn't know what I wanted to do in the cannabis industry, but I knew I felt very called. Both my parents died of cancer when I was in my 20s, and I felt a calling, but I didn't understand what it was. I just knew I had to put myself in those places. Like, you are here today, you're putting yourself here, maybe you're trying to find your way, or maybe you're, you've got some clarity, but you just need those connections. We're listening to our intuition at all times, and I think that's something very important that we, as women, we have that amazing tool, and we need to use that and turn that on. So, um, I, um, I came up with the idea of Tokativity getting stoned with friends and making vision boards, setting intentions, and um, the very first Tokativity was a vision board workshop. So, I knew that um, Sam had been doing consumption events for two years before I'd even met her, and I was like, that badass babe like knows what she's doing. I'm definitely interested in connecting with her, and hopefully she'll want to have some events in her home. So. And then when she told me the name she was thinking of, she's like, I made up a word. It's called tokativity. And I said, fuck yes, I'm in. <laughs> That's her exact, um, you know, exactly what she said, fuck yes. And I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. I had butterflies like pretty much every day for several years because I just felt like, we are doing something so important. And um, and that is really gonna carry us through, and really has. Yeah. But here we are today. Yeah, here's a little bit about our, our network now. Um, our extended media reach is 45 million. Our organic social media reach is 58,000. Mailing list, all the things, demographics. <laughs> Thank you. And you know what's amazing about this? Is we to date have almost never paid for marketing. Um, what, are, what has been our strategy in the last five years to go from the two of us to a 58,000 reach? We collaborate with each other. We lift each other up. We are doing the personal, and really it's about personal growth because to collaborate it means you, you really have to overcome your ego that seems to creep up and tell you that somebody is going to compete with you or that they are going to do it better or that how could I ever do this, right? You have to overcome all of that stuff for yourself. And um, you know we're, we're internally committed to professional and personal growth, really, internally at Tokativity. And when you are committed and you show up every day, even when it's hard, people will notice. And I think that's why we have gotten so much press and why people have been so interested in what we're doing is because we're not just doing it because, you know, because it's cool or because we like weed. Because we like, I mean, it is cool. I mean, I we mean, like we love weed. weed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much bigger than that. And when you have your life path in front of you and you're thinking about what really brings you joy, um, it makes it very easy to wake up every day and continue to doing whatever work you're doing. Um, regardless of the challenges that you may face. So, um, I thought it was really interesting, I was prepping for this talk today, and um, you know, what does it mean to collaborate? Because people always use that word, right? They DM you and you're like, do you wanna collaborate? Let's collaborate. Oh my God, we should collaborate. <laughs> you're like, what does this actually mean? Yeah, 
So I was like, what are you trying to take from me? Exactly. Right? Yeah, it's like, what is this? Especially if you don't know them, and it happens so often in cannabis and so often with women in weed things. And um, so I actually looked it up, and it says, it's a verb, work jointly on an activity, especially to produce or create something. This definition had he collaborated, I put an S in front. She collaborated with the distinguished painter on the designs. Also, and then there was like similar things, join forces. I actually really love that because when we collaborate with others, we do so much more than what we can do by ourselves. And it's incredibly powerful and it's, I'm getting goosebumps right now because it's literally how Tokitivity was built is by joining forces with other women who are doing badass things out there and um, lifting each other up. Well said. So what does it really mean to collaborate? We're gonna dig into this till a little bit. So obviously it's an exchange of energy, right? You want to both people to win or both organizations to win. You know, you have the, you have the potential of supporting, supporting each other long term. But I think speaking a little deeper to this, um, you know, what does it actually mean? It actually means that you wanna succeed and you want to see them genuinely succeed. This is, I got goosebumps again, we're gonna have goosebumps the whole time. It's like, it's so important that you check in with your intentions and if you're having some stuff come up for you, I mean, you need to look at that. And I, I'd say don't go into a collaboration if you're like, uh, I don't feel good. Something feels funny. Something feels funky. You can't, just don't do it then. You know, find collaborators to start. We did this right away of like, who is fully in alignment? And we'll, we'll check, we'll talk a little bit more about that again too. But, you know, it's, it's really easy to just be like, you want the F yes. You, you want the full, we call it the full body fuck yes. It's like, there's nothing that could tell you different. Like, you know that this is going to be good because you are on the same mission and you can help each other and that long-term relationship will continue to serve both of you forever. It's amazing. I think this is a great, fun picture. It's me and Sam dancing at our first birthday party at Tokativity. It was like the funnest party and really celebrating exchange of energy and collaboration. Like Sam and I had different lives and different things. We came together to build something bigger. So how in the world do you do that? What is that, you know, we talked about what does collaboration mean? And um, so what does that mean? Find people and companies you want to work with. Sam mentioned, you know, put people that you're in alignment with. And maybe we can kind of talk about that a little bit. What does alignment yeah, mean? Yeah, I love that. I mean, to me, alignment means, so, okay. I mean, I want to use different examples, but I think we can just use Tokativity because what are we doing, right? Like, well, we started as an event series for women. So if we're gonna collaborate, it's like, okay, well, what do we wanna have at these events that we're having? Well, we know we're gonna need weed. We know we're gonna need um, music. We know we're going to need crafts, right? So right away, we kind of made a list of, of like, what do, we, what do we need? And then what do we have to give? And when you look at those lists next to each other, I mean, we're the queens of just like, looking stuff up on Instagram and finding someone being like, hi, I see you, I see what you're doing, and we are totally in alignment, I can tell from right now, because I'm getting all of the things. We need these things, I'm seeing from your page that you need these things, this is what you're marketing. We can totally help each other, and this is going to be great for both of us. Um, you know, so just inviting them to participate in projects can be so fun. Um, I know I wanted to share some examples real quick, and then Lisa, I'd love to hear you, you know, to carry on with this, but say you're a dispensary. So dispensaries are highly competitive, right? This is a sector that is highly competitive. So if you actually do want to collaborate with other dispensaries, what could you do? Well, you could do like a passport, or you could do like, a, we used to do pub crawls, why not a dispensary crawl? You know, these collaborative marketing campaigns, they work. They get everyone paying attention to everything that everybody in that collaboration is doing. And do you really have to worry about that one customer maybe potentially like liking the other store more? I don't think so, because how many more people are you bringing into your store because of that collaboration? Maybe someone from that store is gonna be like, 
I'm actually going to this other store. I think I'm going to start going to this store. Or maybe they're going to be like, I love that they're working together. I'm now going to choose as a consumer to, to really support both of these businesses. Yeah, I think that's a great example. Um, so short-term creative projects, like they could be just even events, you know, like they events have a beginning, middle, and end. They don't go on and on forever, you know. So um, I've done hundreds of projects for people and for us. We've had over 330 Togativity events. <laughs> And, um, you know, there's been, that would, I would call that a short-term project. And so you can get creative about it and find your favorite time to like brainstorm and think about, think outside the box, you know, like what works for you, what, what things call to you and, um, and, you know, maybe get inspiration from other sectors. There's a lot of cool things happening in tech and there's a lot of cool things happening in other um, places. So think about that. Another idea for like short-term projects, something that's really worked for us, one of our secrets, is giveaways. People love free stuff, come on. And um, it's like the idea of putting together kind of this fun bundle, you can, uh, you can actually create a message too that, that goes beyond your, your individual product. You know, what is your why? So your why might be because your parents died of cancer. You wanna see more people get access to cannabis. Even just doing a, a giveaway campaign with a few different companies can literally help deliver that message. So, and, and something like a giveaway, you know, it's, it has a beginning, middle, and end. Um, and this is an important part too. I think a lot of times people want to collaborate and there's no definition to anything. We're going to move into talking about boundaries here really quick yes. because why do things go awry or why do they not work? It's like, 99% of the time because there were no boundaries set in place. And so when you first start collaborating with somebody, defining the beginning, middle, and end to that first collaboration is gonna be a great way to like see a project through and then look at the data and see how it went and see how you feel and then decide if you wanna go at it again. Yeah, I think a giveaway is also, it's just a great idea because it's short and sweet and not complicated. It can easily get complicated depending on who's behind the scenes, but um, <laughs> but um, it, it's a good um, it's a good starter and a good example of a recipe that works. So getting clear about what you are giving and what you are getting on both sides and write it down, not just in your notebook, but you know if you want to simplify it in email exchange of like you're getting this and we're getting this by this date. It's boundary setting. It's clarity. If you want a next level, you can. Create a contract, very simple, you know. So, um, there's websites out there like DocuSign and um, and whatnot that have three free documents that you can have a, a month, and it's very it's very easy to do. But just getting very clear about what you're giving, and what you're getting, because that can be that can be a slippery slope. Um, if you are given too much and they haven't given enough, or vice versa. So, um, you know, creating an easy to repeat with others, creating a recipe, we gave, gave you a couple of examples. Um, and you can create your own recipe. I wrote this in the car in the way here because we drove from Portland, Oregon. Always be tweaking, not twerking, but tweaking. Um, <laughs> tweak your recipe, like a little bowl, you know, you're making cakes, you're making things out there in the world. Tweak your recipe, make it better each time. Learn from every single experience you ever do out there with other people. It's okay, you might feel burnt out sometimes from something that didn't work out, you just gotta dust your shoulders off and pick it up and tweak your recipe. Try and keep the bigger picture in mind. Again, you know, women hold, I don't have the stats on me, they're changing, I feel like, way too quickly, but women used to hold 35% of, you know, leadership positions in cannabis, and now it's like 8%. So like, you know, something that always really helps me too, and when like, say something didn't go as planned, and it was just like, it hurts, you know, that freaking hurts, like it's, it's really tough to try and collaborate and then have it go awry or feel misunderstood by somebody or like, goodness gracious, the list can go on. It's what really helps me through that is like zooming out. Zoom out on what's happening. How big is this in, in the actual picture and can we forgive and move on and tweak for next time? <laughs> um, maybe make some adjustments. Yes, so, so successful collaborations, they have these things. Clear deliverables and exchanges, 
Honest communication and accountability. This is huge, and this is something I see deeply suffering in our social media world where everybody types on their thumbs and nobody wants to talk to each other. A lot of us I see here might have lived through the 90s where before there was like Facebook and everything, we talked to each other. We called each other on the phone, you know? Sam and I love, love, love video calls. It's still digital, you can talk to anybody in the world. However, you get to see their face see their head shaking yes, you see their eyes, you can create more trust by actually just setting up video calls. And you will create deeper relationships too by talking to each other. It's like there's a reason why people have traveled all around the world to go meet each other for one meeting and then go home because they want to learn each other and be around each other and it's so important to trust building. So also being um, honest and um, accountable. You know, sometimes, like Sam said, things get a little funky, and just getting clear, getting getting back on the track. I thought this was gonna happen, um, but this happened. You know, how can we fix this? Be a problem solver. It's very easy to go down the road of avoidance, not wanting to deal with a confrontation at all, but we need to practice this if we're gonna be here for a long time. Yeah, I mean, this is something that excites me about more women being in businesses across all industries is like this, these like vulnerability and and like relatability is something that is not very present in the patriarchal business society um, or like, you know, in patriarchal business structure, um, but it can be your greatest strength. We've had, believe me, y'all, we've had some collaborations go awry, okay? <laughs> and what has helped us get to the other side? It's like, it takes vulnerability and accountability on our end. And by even, say somebody else, man, they really messed this up, right? Like, we did everything we said they were gonna do. They didn't do anything they said they were gonna do. We're not happy. What are we doing here? By even showing up in that video call or in person, I, ideally, you're looking at them. This is such a critical piece. If you aren't looking at each other, there's going to be an increased chance for miscommunication. Looking at each other and taking accountability for your part. Hey, we set out to like totally change the world with this campaign. And I just want to start off by saying we both did our best here. Everybody's always doing their best. We tried to show up here. You know, I have to be honest that I thought, you know, that these things were clear and it, we obviously know now those things were not clear. So what could we do to make this better? Leading a meeting like that where you have feelings about the other person, but putting those personal feelings aside and prioritizing the bigger picture. What is the bigger picture here? The bigger picture is two badass feminist businesses are trying to collaborate and this means something. This means a lot. Every single time, every collaboration, every amplification, every new business, every new leader, it means a lot. So find a way to zoom out and put your personal feelings over here, look at that bigger picture, be vulnerable, and you'll, like, almost every time you'll see that reciprocated. Their walls then come down, oh God, I thought she was gonna be so pissed I didn't do anything I said I was gonna do on this. I thought she was gonna, like, yell at me in this meeting, right, or something. And it's like, instead, we're being professional and committed to growth. Nice and said, thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, that deserves a thought for sure. Removal of personal feelings and, and um, you know, it's so important. We are, uh, we're women and everybody has feelings. We usually wear our hearts on our sleeves. It's so easy to kind of, you, you use that as a guiding light for yourself and your external relationships, you really do need to focus on the professional development of them and not let the feelings take you over. And of course, good boundaries, you know? So that can really be, um, you know, if someone, it depends on what you're working on, you know, but like, if you do not accept text messages after 10 p.m., tell them, <laughs> you know? Ooh, that's such a juicy one. That we, we've like, ha we are constantly practicing this with each other. She's like, Sam, I love you, but I cannot hear about your romantic relationship before we go into business meetings. <laughs> you know, we're also friends. So like a lot of times in this space too, right, we're cultivating friendships. So what are the boundaries for that? I mean, things get out here real fast, y'all. It's like boundaries are a form of self-preservation. 
It's like, if you want to be your best self, set those boundaries ahead of time. You won't regret it. <laughs> yep. And if you're like working on discovering what are they, you know, you can experiment and they can be moved. They can be negotiated. Um, they're yours. Absolutely. Even like our text mess message thing, that's like an internal thing. Like we, it changes. You know, at this point, anyone in our company can reach out to me at any time because I have the space for it and they know that. Other times it's been like communication via Slack and I only have notifications on between nine and two. <laughs> you know, so your boundaries can change. Be empowered by that. It's a good thing. Yes. So successful collaborations do not include. We just had to, you know, share a little bit about this. No limits or boundaries. We talked about that. Guilt or shame energy, I think that's where the feeling stuff comes in, making people feel bad for what they did. It's like not actually lifting everybody up. It's not your highest, you know, your highest self speaking. It's using the patriarchy's way of punishment. So yeah, don't, fear-based tactics, and fear -based right? Fear-based tactics. So you yeah. have the power to like make a different choice. And we give you some um, examples of that. Ghosting. Who here has been ghosted uh, by somebody before? Uh, right? Yeah, everybody. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and that didn't feel great, right? Um, when you disappear, you stop communicating with someone, or someone stops communicating with you, and you thought everything was all good, and then they just literally stop texting you back, writing you back, etc. And now you have to deal with whatever is on the other side of what you were doing. Oh, I mean, so. like from your own perspective, right? So say you have a difficult thing, say like a collaboration did not go well, you're like dreading the conversation, you're like, I can't deal with this right now. I'm just gonna leave it over here. And then you're like, oh, I forgot about it. And, you know, I think a lot of times ghosting is coming from that space. It's not coming from a like, I'm just gonna disappear on this person. It's coming from like, I feel uncomfortable and I wanna avoid this. Their own guilt or shame. Yeah, absolutely. But like by stepping in, it just like, it creates that resolution. And really what happens when you ghost is you leave them with the opportunity to make up whatever story they want to make up about you. So instead of you being able to share your truth, they are creating some story about you. And I don't know about you, but as a businesswoman, I don't want someone creating stories about me. I will have a conversation no matter how difficult it is. You heard what about me? <laughs> Let's sit down and talk about it. Let's dig into this, you know? Um, it's, it's really helped us grow, and we, we definitely have a very firm policy about this. And actually, even within email, like, this is something I learned in my earlier business days. It was just like, always reply. Like, always reply, even when it's like, okay, this is all done, great, thanks. You know, and at some point you gotta like, okay, <laughs> I don't need to respond thank anymore. You, no, thank you, no, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, sometimes even those kind of lingering communications of like lack of confirmation can feel like ghosting to somebody and they can then make up stories about you as a businesswoman or as a business person. I want to add something here about email. Sometimes like you're having your conversation and your clarification stuff happening through email, but then very quickly something gets misunderstood. Get on a call ASAP. Immediately. Totally just Descends take here. the digital out. That is literally like been my mantra for the last several years. It's very, sometimes it's just, it's hard to do because you just want to like reply and blah, 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 you just write whatever. Nope. You just unplug yourself from the digital and get to that person as quickly as possible, whether it's a phone call or radio call. Make it personal. You will literally survive so much longer in business, especially in cannabis, if you are able to do that. The next piece, jealousy and sabotage. Um, well, I've been going through like a personal, you know, come to spirit moment about call out culture. I think calling things out is is actually like an important part of where we're at. Um, you know, especially within cannabis, the drug war was built on systemic racism and is literally a modern form of slavery. And you know. I could go on a tangent about that. If you don't know the history of the drug war, like please go down a rabbit hole. You need to, you have to. It's a requirement for the industry. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. And you know, we have an opportunity to use cannabis tax dollars for reparations and to change things and to really like shift this whole thing. It's why we're all here, right? To change the world. This does not happen if we are sabotaging one another. 
it's so painful. And sometimes, like we said, sometimes things go wrong. But like, is the best strategy to just call someone out on Instagram and then walk away from it? Like, we don't think so. We've had, um, I want to use one quick example here. There was a, a very well-known cannabis company that had a sexual harassment situation. For us as a feminist company, you know, who centers women, this is like really problematic. We could have, I mean, we watched a lot of our women that we've been working with in industry tear this company down online. People actually asked us to do the same. And we were like, we will never, you will never see Tokativity talking bad about anyone because everybody is doing their best. Everybody is out there. People make mistakes, right? And, and this company, they employ a whole bunch of women. So how does this serve me to, to rip down this dude-owned business when I know literally, personally, 20 women who work for them? So what we did is we had conversations with the women who work there. And we were curious. And you know, now it's like if somebody asks us about that very famous company, <laughs> you know, we'll happily share what we know. And it's not a it's not smashing them or it's not whatever. It's like, you know, a lot of the women that work for them feel safe, and that's what we've heard. Um, situations happen. So it's very sen it can be very sensitive, but like I just think this is an, a really important to note with collaboration. Because it's happened to, help, to us. I mean, people have started things to try and bring us down online, and we literally just ignore it. We don't have time for that. There's, there's too much work to do for women and for people of color, for future generations. Yes, yes. So um, in relationship to sabotage, jealousy it is a normal feeling to feel jealous of somebody or something or something that they have or something that they did. However, you absolutely have the power to turn that around and be like, ooh, that's information for me that I really like what they're doing. And I, I am myself. There's literally no one in the world like me and there's nobody that can do what I do in the way that I do it. If you just focus on you being yourself in your business and in your life, you will have that forward momentum of focus of what works for you. If you're constantly comparing yourself to other people and what they're doing, what they did, you will literally get lost along the way. It will hold you back. Do not let jealousy hold you back. Jealousy is amazing information. What is it about that them that makes them you feel jealous? Is it like when you identify what that is, you can like take that to then become yours. You know, and it's not stealing your thing. It's like, God, I really admire how she's speaking at all of these things. I wish I was doing that. You know, that's like, okay, use that as information of like, okay, I'm gonna start putting myself out there as a public speaker. I'm gonna record some videos. I'm gonna let people know that this is something I wanna do and I'm actually gonna apply to speak at some things. You know, it's like, that's that's fuel. I think that's fuel for us to like, see where we maybe need to make some adjustments. It's not something that needs to be put on someone else. I want to end here about karma. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, what goes um, around comes around. Yes, I'm mean, serious, like, you know, I, I'm a spiritual person. Um, I don't have any practicing things that I do um, besides some witchy things, but, um, but, but really, the energy you put out there is what comes back to you. So if you literally focus on positive energy, positive thinking about what you're doing and who you're meeting and supporting each other, it will come back to you. I've seen it so much with us. I'm so grateful. And we've made choices. We could go the dark. We can go down the dark road, or we can take the high road. And we all like to get high, so <laughs> take the high road. <laughs> hey, time check. How are we doing? Okay, great. So what does work? We've got a whole lot of things. So you can see here, I mean, obviously with events, there's a really, it's really easy to collaborate with events, but I really wanted to um, highlight something that we learned for, from some other folks that we've used along the way that's been very effective. And I see companies like Happy Monkey using this. That is very effective marketing strategy. Is forming cohorts. So this is a group, I mean, the way Happy Monkey does it is it's via a WhatsApp group. And you get added to this WhatsApp group, and then when they're promoting something, they send it out through there. And their people then promote it. 
We've had Instagram cohorts where if someone then shares something, everyone goes and reshares it and likes it and comments it and puts it in stories. There is a technological algorithm running our lives. Get to know it and use it for your benefit. Collaboration is like the number one way that you can really, especially in social media world, grow fast and kind of beat that algorithm by um, working together. Yeah, the Instagram cohorts have been amazing. Um, I've been thinking about doing another one for a minute. Um, media partnerships, like being able to like put your uh, folks' logos on events, graphics, etc. Uh, people want to be seen. People want to be followed. So wherever you can do that, and maybe it's just a simple exchange, logo for logo. Um, tagging, we talked about a little bit, cohorts. Yeah, just show, show people who you are. Show up as your best self. You know, we didn't put this on the list, but something that is important to note too are really just those personal like mentorship type relationships um, and collaborating that way. Uh, just like I have some business colleagues where we're not publicly collaborating, but internally we are collaborating. We are running things by each other. We have each other sign an NDA and we're like, I need help sister. And that type of collaborating can really help you overcome the many challenges that come with not only being in business, but with being in cannabis. So things to look out for, um, we talked a little bit about folks that don't follow through to their part. People that take things from you personally, you might be you're coming up with your best self, but that other person or people might not be. So, you know, be mindful of that and listen to your intuition about flags. Online bullies and people that talk badly about each other, that is a flag. That is information that they'll probably do that about you. <laughs> so watch out. Um, giving too much or not matching the exchange, it happens a lot sometimes when someone's very excited and even though you did everything you could, you laid out what you were giving and what you were getting, people get excited and they do too much and they get mad about it. <laughs> so if you notice someone doing too much, you know, use your intuition and, you know, or maybe even mention it in the time of like, you're really going above and beyond. I want to check in, check in with you and just, we, I want to make sure this feels good on the output and I only have this much to give. I really see you. Yeah. That midway can like totally help you avoid a massive disaster <laughs> on the other end. Okay, this is like by far my favorite right now. Don't burn bridges. <laughs> the industry is smaller than you think and ask for what you need or create healthy boundaries instead. And so we actually created a, um, a an event series that is now gonna be a TV series, which is really exciting, called Bridges. And it was inspired by a couple of folks that were burning bridges left and right. And it was very sad to us. And we were like, wow, that literally does not have to happen. And um, you know, just because something didn't work out doesn't mean you have to unfollow them and talk badly about them and make sure everybody you know hates them and everything. It's just not going to work out long term. Remember karma and the exchange of energy. The number of times people ask me, hey, I saw you were collaborating with that person. Whatever happened with that? Oh, we weren't in alignment. It's all good. Wishing them the best of luck. You know, that is coming from a genuine place. I really hope they get their shit together. Because, again, we need you, sister. Yeah. I need you out here. Like, come on. You know? <laughs> so it's all about win-wins. Making sure that, like, everybody wins in that collaboration and that it feels really awesome. That, that everybody feels like they got something great out of it. Um, that's why business deals, and I think that, um, you know, dude bros have been really good at this for a very long time. They make sure everybody wins from the thing and they make all the money and all that stuff. But like, you know, make, making sure everyone's getting something good out of it. And when you do it well, people are going to want to work with you again. They're going to be like, oh yeah, that worked out really well. I loved what I got out of that. I loved the way I felt. Some weird stuff happened, but who cares? They're awesome and I really love working with them. So I would do it again. And then you can start scaling that, right? Then you have your recipe. What worked really well? Now I have a recipe for collaboration that works well. How do I scale that collaboration to make a bigger impact? We did that with our events. We started with a handful of collaborators. Eventually we ended up with like, you know, sometimes there's literally like 75 collaborators on one event. And it's like, you know, once you have the recipe and you've got the systems in place to support your collaboration for clear boundaries, expectations, and deliverables, 
you, the sky's the limit. There's no, there's no limit. You can just fly together. Yes, honesty and integrity is so important in this space. And equality and respect, that's all we all want anyway, right? And I was talking with a friend um, this past weekend about equality and like, what does it even mean? It's like an equity, well, equality is about partnership. You know, it's not about one person being, you know, like women taking over the world and whatever. It's like, we're working together to make everything better. And that really comes from partnership. And I think we all have somebody in our lives we can think of that we're like, we have a great partnership, whether it's your, you know, life partner or a parent or a friend or whatever, a business partner. You know, that's a really, really positive energy. It's a great example of, of what you want to feel out there in the world with your business. And ask for what you need with clarity and practice. I am mean, literally practice this all the time. <laughs> and getting clear about what I'm feeling and being like, okay, what I really need from you is this. Because that, you know? And like practice it. And um, if someone's not meeting your needs, don't get mad at them. Get clear about what it is, what, how can I be more clear about what I need? We are not mind readers. We like to think maybe our partners are mind readers and they should just know what we need, but they don't. Help them out, tell them what you need, and keep practicing. Love that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Show people what you got. I mean, you know, this is who we are. You're seeing it here right now. Thousands and thousands and thousands of other people have seen us over the years, and it's tried and true. We keep evolving, but at our core, we're the same. Show them who you are. You know, um, you want things to feel easy. Obviously, you're working on your business, right? So this is this is a like marketing strategy. This is a growth strategy. So it can't be your focus all the time. So you know, find systems that are easy and show the people that you're working with that you can help make this really smooth. Thank you so much, everybody, for having us. This is really special to be here. Thank you, Brooke, for reaching out. We really appreciate it. Um, you know, I guess just final, I, I'll share my final thought, and Lisa, if you want to share a final thought. Like, what keeps me pumping every single day is this, like, long-term vision that I can see. I can see the world with, like, us living more in balance with the earth and people seeing each other and respecting each other and equal opportunity and abundance and plant medicine and all of this stuff, right? How do we get there? It is not going to happen on our own. It is not going to be one person that's gonna have some genius idea to create a solution. There's a whole bunch of geniuses sitting in the room here right now. We are literally all pioneers. This is the very beginning of something that is literally turning the world on its head for many reasons. Cannabis and plant medicine doesn't fit into the patriarchy. They're gonna try and shove it there, but guess what? It doesn't because personal healing is a journey that everybody is on and no one can control that. That's liberation, that is empowerment. And when everybody is coming from that space first, I think we're gonna see collaborations actually be the thing that tips the scales. All right, right on. I, I agree with everything he said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. um, thank you so much, and thanks, Brooke, for inviting us to speak here today. It's so important um, what we're all doing, what you're all doing, and I can't wait to meet each one of you. Um, I think we might have time for maybe one question if somebody has something burning. Otherwise, you can pull us aside and... Um, I'm happy to talk to any of you. I'm going to be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here today. I have to pick up my son tomorrow. New co-parenting schedule. <laughs> so I have to head back to, Port to Portland, unfortunately. But I'll be here in spirit. Yeah. But, but you all are the movement right now. Each one of you and everything you're doing in your work and in your business and in your life and the relationships that you're building is one step in front of the other on what is next for the cannabis movement. You are part of it, it is exciting, I'm getting goosebumps right now, and you know we can't um, do this without one another. So be mindful in your collaborations and in your energy, and it will come back to you tenfold. You can enjoy the growth that you experience from your collaborations. Yes. Thank you, Thank you all so much. Awesome.
like in more ways than one. I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of things that, me, I'm new into this industry, this is my second year in, and there were so many things that I was like, oh yeah, check the box, that happened. Oh, check the box, this happened. <laughs> and I think it's even more relatable because bringing my business partner on board and like having, and like just things that we've had situations with. And um, you know, at the end of the day, like the biggest thing I think if you can take anything away from their messaging is honestly, don't worry about what other people are doing and be yourself. Because if you're anything else, and you're like, well, I need to fit into this box because that's what this person's doing and they're very successful at it, you, it won't work. It just doesn't pan out that way. So you, you know, at, at the end of the day, collaborate with people to help figure out what the recipe is. So like, I really like how you explained it that way. And come together and network with people and do the collaborations. I mean, I, I really wanted this event to happen last year and it just didn't happen. And so you just have to keep plugging away at it until you get where you need to be. And karma really does work. <laughs> my, um, we have seven billboards up, and one of them just happened to be right across from my ex-husband's house. <laughs> my son said to me one day, he's like, Mom, he's like, yeah, he's like, the billboard, I see it every day when Daddy picks me up, like on the schedule, we have this weird parenting schedule. And I said, what's your dad saying? He goes, oh, God, there she is again. And I was like, oh. <laughs> So I am so glad that we connected. I mean, like I really um, aunt, like just been in awe of your guys' company and both of you for a very long time. So these ladies, take your time if you can, like have some time with them. They'll be around. I have an extra table too if you guys want some people to come do meet and greets. Um, I've got an extra space for that. So please get together with them. All of that stuff they're telling you is spot on all of it for business. And you really need, it's hard being a woman in business and an entrepreneur and you don't know where you're going and you're figuring out the recipe. So thank you for that.